because I'm going to go in between um, pictures and images. Um, we will be doing a little bit of technical time. And so I wanted to encourage um, you to also talk to each other. And that is also due to the, the nature of what I'm looking at. Um, one of the questions that um, the Invisible Difference Conference posed when asking for presentations was around, do you see the dance or the disability? What are the audience responses? to seeing dance and disability, or are you seeing the dance or are you seeing the disability? And um, being artistic co-director of Kanduka Dance Company for eight years now, having worked with Kanduka for 15 years um, and toured around the world, met I think thousands of people probably, um, it's a really interesting setup for me and it's a question that I feel like we grapple with all the time and actually the grappling with this question of as an audience, do we see the dance or do we see the disability? That's a dichotomy, <laughs> a question. Um, has that even changed in the time I spent with Kanduka? Has it even changed since Kanduka started in 1991? So I want to share with you a little bit of my thinking around some of these questions, share with you more questions, and uh, get you also to consider that, to consider how you see things, how, what do you notice, what do you pay attention to? So, we're going to start with just turning to the person next to us or finding someone next to us or behind us that you can just say hello to and introduce yourself to. <laughs> and um, also, just take a minute, uh, just take a minute to, to uh, look at them, to notice, notice what they're wearing, what they look like, um, what your first impression of them is. Okay. So do move closer towards each other so you can talk to each other, you can hear each other. I'm looking at you at the front. Yes. Yes. So if you. Okay. Attention, please. <laughs> See, that's what happened with audience engagement. If you carry it. Um, so please do this for me. Um, look, observe, and then tell the other person. Two, three, four things that you see, your first impression of what you see, yeah? So just go ahead and do that, please. <laughs> <laughs> A wonderful smile. Oh, thanks. You look very important. <laughs> 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 Okay, brilliant. I'm going to stop you there. Um, I've had my moment with the person next to me. Actually, I have to talk to you. Dave. Right. So, Dave, I hope you don't mind me sharing uh, what we were just talking about. So, um, my, I was saying today, my first impression of Dave was actually his hair. And then I started looking a bit closer, I noticed his amazing eyebrows, that are also quite long, so in terms of hair, and then that he wears glasses, and then it made me think of myself because I wear contact lenses and sometimes glasses. And then David, if you don't mind, I can just relay what you said about me. So the, you said, I see someone who's going about to present something, which means that I have to deal with the technical things, and that I had a fairly pleasant looking face. <laughs> <laughs> and so what I'm, and, and what's ex what, what I find interesting and quite exciting and, and also thought provoking about our first impressions is that we are relating to who we see in often physical, well, in our case, physical appearance played one part, as well as our own context. So David thinking, I'm the presenter, that relates to him. I look at David, I see glasses, I think about myself. So immediately I also found that we were sort of comparing, or I, I was making a comparison, not even a comparison, but I was relating what I thought to myself. 
So I find that also interesting, especially when we think about the dance and the disability and what we see on stage and what we see in the images that we see. So if you look at the image that you see in front of you here, what do you see? If you want to give me some of those quick fire first impressions about what do you see in that image? What do you see in the image? Can you see the image? <laughs> Two women. Two women, yeah. Muscles. Muscles, yeah. Balance. 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 Convergence of two bodies. Convergence of two bodies, yeah. Looking at shape or space. Mm -hmm. Other things? Torsion. Torsion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Extension. Extension. Friends. Friends. <laughs> Disability. Disability. Crutches. Crutches, yeah. Uh, aesthetic lines. Aesthetic lines, yeah. I see something different and interesting. Uh huh. You see something that is different and interesting, yeah. Uh huh. Great. Light on skin. Light on skin. Great. So we have lots, lots from that. And actually, if you hear, or well, it's easy to consider what we hear and how we relate that to. What, what starting point do we start from to tell what we see? So also we had some things that were quite neutral. There's two women. There's two bodies. There's two women. They have. Uh, we do see crutches. So there's some things that are almost like factual, and then there are some things in your descriptions that reveal maybe something about what you are interested in or around looking at, even looking at skin or muscle or well, maybe a bit of factual, but I find that it's interesting to hear the flavour even of what we see, what we hear. And so I think that I'd, next I would quite like you to think about when you see, when you see dance and disability or disability and dance or dance or disability, what do you see as a precursor, as in most of you have been in the situation where you've seen inclusive dance or dance done by disabled dancers or non-disabled dancers and what do you come with to that situation? So while I find a little clip to show you from one of Kanduka's performances, I'd quite like you to just have a little think about what you, what you think that you come to when you are being presented that you're going to go and see dance and disability. If that is the context, if you've been given the context that what you're going to see now is dance and disability. What do you see? So just take a minute while I just practically find the next clip. Okay. Okay, so I know I've opened a massive question, I've opened a massive uh, consideration, and I don't expect you to have a, um, a fully fledged answer, but I just wanted you to start some of that thinking, uh, as that was the question we proposed initially was, are we seeing the dance, are we seeing the disability? Of course, there's the question is, is there a dichotomy, or do we see both, or does it not matter to us? What is it? Anyway, what I'd quite like to do next is just to show you a small clip, a little excerpt from a performance by uh, Kanduko Dance Company, um, so that you can, in a way, just see something and reflect on that question for yourself. It 
is a promo video, so it means that it's showing you different clips from within the half hour performance. It's not one through section. The idea that I brought with me. It's a long one. All that work. <laughs> <laughs> we fix this, to, to, to just consider your question in relation to what you just saw. So quite practically, what did you see? How did you think about that in terms of the, the, the question, dance or disability? I'm being quite uh, black and white at this moment in time, just to make a point. So let's talk between yourselves. What did you see, dance or disability? Great. Is it possible to have some quick responses from you? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm gonna. I know we haven't finished talking about it. In a way, I think in a way this whole conference is talking about this in one way or another, and we keep talking about it. But some quick responses just to trigger us. Yes. For me, I see. I, I just see the, the the dance, the concept, the the choreography. Yeah. Delivery of the movement um, and the inventiveness of it, you know, using the questions, but I don't really, I don't say, oh, you know, I don't, to me, it's, yes. it's about the performance. And but what is your, so what is your background? What's, where do you come from? Um, from a dance background. Yes, exactly, yes. yeah. And from yeah. a background where you work with disabled yeah. artists on a daily basis as well. Yeah. yeah. So I think I agree with you. I, me too. I only see the dance. Yeah. But, uh, well... What do I see? I see the bodies. So of course I notice the crutches, and of course I see when yeah. a dude comes in the back and does the unison with all the yeah. guys standing and he's in the chair. Yeah, and you'll, I see. See, you'll see the bodies anyway, even if, you know, if it was a kind of a non-disabled company. You, 
you'd see bodies anyway, wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah. But then other, other impressions or other first things that came up talking? Um, I, I saw dance, mm -hmm. but it was asking me to think about disability through its use of crutches. Mm -hmm. But I didn't, I didn't see disability in bodies. I yes. wasn't. I mean, obviously, you know, sort of, it came to a bit where disability in bodies was obvious. But I didn't actually see that. I saw dance, yeah. but it was asking me to think about disability. I think it's quite interesting too, because of course, the beginning that you see is they're all actually dancing the same dance, unison, sitting on the floor doing at the you know acid starts they're doing very similar movement and I don't know if that has an impact on what our perception of dance is in a quite a traditional way of dance possibly but I also feel like the traditional way of thinking about dance is maybe what poses the question is it dance or is it disability as in why that sometimes for an audience and it's interesting to think about what are who the audiences that we meet everywhere we go are are they a dance audience that is quite used to seeing a variety of dance or are they quite new to dance are they quite new to performers being quite mixed in terms of their body physicalities different expressions or are they very used to seeing a real variety of bodies on stage and i think that really does the lens <laughs> i think we talked, i mentioned this yesterday i'm really interested in the lens with which we come to see the work which is why i was asking about your background in the sense that i I think it's quite difficult for us to even remove that and which is why I'm interested in first impressions too as to you know what is it that we see first and then what does the work do what does the dance do to reveal itself or to reveal to you the multiplicity of identities of the performers or of the work in and of itself and um, I just wanted to play the next bit which is the interview with the choreographer so it's actually Claire Cunningham's piece that we did for in 2012 and it was an unlimited commission and again the context of that is that unlimited was specifically asking disabled artists disabled makers to make work and we had a really extended cast with more variety within the cast that we had at that point compared to our usual cast and so interesting as to what the visual impact is of actually really seeing um, seeing yeah seeing difference on stage uh, let me just play this the idea that I brought with me when I at the start of the project was to explore the notion of emotional or psychological crutches. Um, I use crutches, I've worked with, uh, I've used them uh, in my life for 20 years and I came into dance quite late, about five or six years ago and my entire relationship with dance and movement has been through the crutches. bastante interessante porque ao mesmo tempo que era divertido era como uma brincadeira entre crianças que descobriam os elementos o objeto a gente também podia trabalhar com as nossas muletas emocionais com as nossas questões internas a partir desse objeto The other thing that I think is interesting is the intention of the choreographer making the work or where they are coming from, what's the, fab the concept that they are starting with and as Ka um, Claire was saying, for her the, the transporting from being quite a solo artist to working with a group of 12 dancers, she was talking about how, what is it that I bring to the studio that feels relevant to all these people in one way or another and how is it relevant to crutches is the way I make use of extending my body and moving in space. How is that relevant to them? And I think for, she tried to sort of teach some of her technical work and kind of going, that just doesn't, that looks like assimilation, that doesn't look good enough, it doesn't really give me, that's not the interesting bit, which is why they ended up using the crutches in other ways to manipulate each other, to use the crutches in other than the functional ways. Although two of the dancers who would normally use crutches more often, 
she worked then with them specifically. I think we had the duet work with Welling and Michele in there because they had a movement language that was within their bodies more closely related to Claire. But I think it's really interesting to think about what's the intention of the choreographer in relation to the audience response, as in do they see, do they want to reveal something about disability? Do they want to reveal something about dance? And is there a, is obviously a space for both of them, for all those things? But is it always that a disabled choreographer's intention is, or a company that works with a mixture of different physicalities, abilities, bodies, have to focus on disability as a theme? I think not, but again, it's various options. Um, and therefore, I also wanted to share with you something about other works. Um, so, um, As a company, we are a repertory company, it means that we make different works every year. And uh, one of the other people we work with is Javier de Frutos, who's a non-disabled choreographer, been working in dance for many, many years. I worked with him first in 2000, that's 15 years ago, uh, and he made two pieces on the company in quite close proximity, one in 2000, one in 2003, and, and then came back in 2011 to make a duet. Um, and I'm going to show you a little bit from that duet, but before I get in there, I just wanted to say that the exciting thing with him, that we went from indoors to outdoors. So we went from thinking about dance inside, and 1991 making Kanduko, and sort of establishing itself, there seemed to be at the time a real need to be indoors, in the main theatres, on the main stages, to put dance and the disabled dancers on those platforms for audiences to engage with dance at the time more traditionally. And it feels like now in 2012, 13, 14, 15, we have also shifted maybe in dance our relationship to our audiences. So we've moved outside as well um, to think about what that means. Um, where people can meet us, well, how that works. Um, I will talk a bit more about that, but let me just play you a little bit of uh, uh, the promo video for Studies for C, which is the duet that Javier made on Dandor and Miriam Gertner. The story basically tells about the day in the life of two characters who are in this place of limbo. Um, so they're unable to escape, nor do they want to because they're so reliant on each other um, as part of their daily life and daily ritual and it becomes a sort of love-hate relationship and they find themselves unable to leave even though per they perhaps really want to and even though perhaps they feel like they're even drowning at times. <laughs> when two individuals cohabit for so long that they start moving and talking like each other for better or for worse. Uh, and in this case what it appears is that Miriam has made the choice of cohabiting in a very tight space um, and have pretty much a couple that are in a rot uh, that really cannot live with each other but cannot live without them because it's been too long and there, there are not many other options outside for them. Uh, and I think that's the sadness of it but that's also the very waiting for Godot uh, moment where, where nothing happens and nothing happens twice as they used to say. <laughs> Great, just take a moment to digest that while I get it out of this. So 
talking about intentions of choreographers and what Dan and Javi was talking about was very much the relationship, the relationship of two people. And so from a thematic point of view, it's not about disability at all. It's about people. And uh, when watching Frida, falling in love with Frida and Claire's work yesterday was that sensation of something that's quite personal is also universal and something that relates to me whether I'm disabled or not can also relate to someone else um, and actually what's been exciting about going from inside to outside and taking this work outside has been that people stumble across it they didn't choose to go and see dance and disability they didn't choose to go to the theatre to educate themselves in that manner. They stumble upon, stumble upon the, the dance and they stumble upon the, the performers and through that the, the sort of response has often been, oh I didn't notice the disability, oh it was fantastic and of course when someone says that, oh I didn't even notice the disability, there's a part of me that go, mm, really? But is that a good thing or a bad thing? As in, it sits with us, it's part of what we do, it's what informs the work. Are they saying Actually, I didn't notice the disability because it would have been negative to notice the disability. Or are they saying, I didn't notice the disability because actually what they saw was the ability, which was great and a positive. But I remember one of the dads was saying that after a post-show talk when one of those members, oh, I didn't even notice your prosthetic arm. And he was like, well, so what does that mean? That your expectations of me were so low that... The, that you needed to reach, think what what's going to be good or not good. And so I, I'm just touching on this because I think that was a massive subject as to our expectations, as to what we expect if we know that it's made by a disabled choreographer the work or that it involves disabled dancers. Do we have to talk about it? Do we not have to talk about it in the marketing material, in the pictures that you see? So the outdoors has been great for that in the sense that many people have just come upon it, not knowing about Candice, not knowing about who's on stage, but just been gravitating towards a piece of work that somehow sorry, is, um, is exciting for them to watch. There was a young boy when we were in Skegness last summer who sort of was on his bike and sort of halfway crossed and passed and, and sort of just stopped and then for the 15 minutes, next 15 minutes, didn't move. So there was obviously something that drew him towards staying there and watching Possibly it was just that it was weird and they didn't know it. But there was also this thing of how can we make, obviously, the artwork such as that it just somehow finds a connection to us and that it also finds a connection to people um, beyond whether it's dance or disability or beyond whether it's both and, and or not. Um, I'm just aware there were imagery, because in these images, I don't know if we see disability or not. In other images, like say from Claire Cunningham's work, it might the visual indicators that we spoke about a little bit yesterday might be more obvious. And then what does that do to how we straight away start considering what it is that we see or our expectations of what we see? So I do you think it's quite a interesting point? Uh, very la last rounding up. I also just uh, we we are currently reworking Trisha Brown's. Uh, piece set and reset to be set for the company, which is a piece that was made in 1986 for a company of non-disabled dancers. We took it on board in 2011 because we wanted to work with what does it mean to be unique and individual? <laughs> what does it mean that each dancer is unique and individual and have their own movement aesthetic that they come with and is that the way forward for, for all dancers to a certain extent to be challenged? with um, what they can express themselves. But what does it mean when the dance tradition, in many, many cases, has been about a set movement vocabulary or a set aesthetic? And what happens with the principles of that set aesthetic if the shaping of the principle changes? So a bit similar to when a theatre company does Shakespeare again, but they do it in a modern version or they do it their, their different variation. We have a sort of a sense of what that classic was. But we are often, I find, very excited to see the change, the difference, the variation, the new angles that they have given us to look at the work again with. And I, I feel with the set and reset, that is exactly what that has created for us. I'm not going to show you any footage right now. There is footage on our website if you're interested in seeing. And we will be performing it next year in London. Um, but I think just to finish off, I think in a way that's the crux of what I want to say is that somehow that the diversity of performers 
And I found this Wikipedia definition of evolution when I was preparing another, um, another presentation on the evolution of the arts, which basically place diversity at the heart of evolution, which is kind of like, oh, that just <laughs> resonates so strongly with Kantuko's vision and thinking that actually it is the different abilities, it's the different starting points, it's the difference from within that is the breeding ground for creativity, that, that diversity enriches the art form, that is what drives our questioning forwards, it's what drives our artistic research forwards, and that is exciting, and that's kind of really why actually it's not dance or disability and it's the dance and disability the and the I think I title is counterbalancing but with a question because as a counterbalancing says well we need one well one um, amends the other somehow but actually one needs the other and if anything it's that they both together drive forwards our thinking both around dance and around disability if we do want to separate them but also about just the art form moving forwards so that's my thinking thank you very much for listening Very tough walking. We've spoken a lot. It's fabulous. It's just been great. We've probably got time for a couple of questions. Go ahead and ask any chat. Yeah, I found that really interesting. Thank you. Because one of the one of the things that uh, we've been doing within Invisible Difference, from the sort of legal perspective, is to look at. Um, I mean, it kind of sounds odd from a legal perspective, but we've been looking at audience literacy yes. for disabled dance. Yeah. I mean, we've been we've been looking at it in the context of, uh, you know, how could one bring this under a human rights framework and you know sort of require you know sort of some some form of funding to go into audience literacy but I mean what, what comes out of you know sort of a fairly strong message for me that came out of that was um, there is a, a, a challenge perhaps around audience literacy for for the work that they are looking at and of course here you have um, a very experienced audience that you're uh, that you're talking to at the moment um, but how would you go about you know sort of educating your audiences <laughs> Good question. I think if our marketing people knew that, we'd all be really happy. Um, I think that, yes, the question around how do you develop audience literacy, and, and it made me think of something that you spoke about in the last conference, there was a different conference in November, about um, that either it falls, the usual responses falls into either pity or inspirational kind of language. Um, and actually, looking, I was looking at some of the audience feedback that we get too, and Usually it's either, oh, that was fantastic, amazing, they were so acrobatic, they were so physical, they were, oh, just in, truly inspirational, and uh, possibly more of that than the, the pity element for us. Um, but critics are definitely talking more and more about the work and about the physicality of the work, highlighting the kind of uh, strengths of what they see in movement terms and talking more. There was just literally one review out yesterday from Nicholas Mintz from the last piece we did. So I was really aware reading that, that he was not talking about disability specifically. He was not using that language of either pity or inspiration, although it was very positive. But and. In general audience terms, I guess what we put into place are the post-show talks, like Caroline did yesterday, where you have a chance to talk to people. In advance, we put out usually a lot of taster information about the pieces video, in video content, so that there is video content for people to watch. Although that takes a very um, advanced audience, I think, <laughs> to engage in that way. Um, imagery, so that images, we... Still are in the position where we tend to make the different bodies available in our marketing image, and I sometimes you know, and and probably only in my time in Kaduka I've had one poster that was a non-disabled dancer, and not a mixture dancers on the image, and so it, it is still interesting that we possibly feel a need to show people what it mm. is that they are coming to see. Which is not a bad thing, it, it is what they're coming to see, but you know, in terms of the questioning around what is needed, um, I do think that there's a generally, um, well, dance has a difficulty in terms of generating audiences, 
So um, contemporary dance is even smaller than that. And if anything, I think what we try to do is, is almost try to bridge being in different places. So the outdoors, the indoors, in galleries. In, and so what's happening, I think, at the moment is that there's more dance happening in different places. So you're actually going out to meet audiences where they are, to give them an experience where they are. And I think through that engagement, possibly, we are building more awareness throughout as well as the big broadcasters. So to be part of the Paralympics in 2012 is really important because of the mass output of information and the kind of everybody kind of using to a certain extent the, the media to show more images, to show more footage, to I think is one way to get audiences to train their eyes, to be more aware, to see more things that therefore is part of the of our lived experience. Thank you. Okay, I think we're done. Thank you so much.